The time has come for the Giratina Altered Form PvP IV Deep Dive, letting you know if you should trade to get better Giratina Altered Form IVs for Ultra League PvP, right? Specifically for both Shadow Claw and Dragon Breath Giratina. And in this video, I'll also let you know what the minimum IVs are for a Master League Giratina Altered Form as well. Should you pull the pin on all that XL candy and Stardust, or should you hold out a little bit longer? In this video, I'm going to be talking about the hidden true stats of a Pokemon and breakpoints. If you're not too familiar with these concepts, then I highly recommend checking out my PvP IVs simplified video, link up above and in the description. Basically, get your feet wet before you dive off into the deep end here. And to make things even more simple for you, I am going to be featuring PvP IV tables, featuring all the IV spreads that meet the stat checks that I talk about in this video. These tables will be featured in the article on GamePress, the Giratina Altered Form PvP IV Deep Dive, and that article also features all the information in this video but in a text-based format so if you want to reference anything and you want to check out the tables I'll link in the description to that article and without further ado let's talk about Giratina altered form Tina you fat lard come get some dinner starting out with some moveset basics here for Giratina um, fast moves right shadow claw or dragon breath and it really comes down to what you're trying to go for with your Giratina altered form what kind of team you're running typically the shadow claw is going to be the bread and butter because it chunks it's got the ghost type coverage it's got good energy gains um, but there are a lot of use cases for the dragon breath too especially for you know the uh, dark and normal type Pokemon that think they can counter Giratina super easily or the dragon types that think they can outpace it well now all of a sudden they're getting hit in the face with a bunch of dragon breath damage instead of like neutral or resisted you know shadow claws there so yeah both fast moves are pretty valid it really comes down to your team and what kind of meta you're expecting to walk into when it comes to the charge moves dragon claw on all of them dragon claw is giratina's best charge move so you want to have it on all giratina move sets unless you've got some big brain anti-meta perspective going on there in which case i will not tell you that you are wrong right and then when it comes to the secondary charge move for shadow claw you can go with either shadow sneak or the ancient power in ultra league pvp ancient power kind of has some clout it recently had it's damage buffed and there's tons of town flame flying around in the ultra league on top of it so i'd say it's a pretty respectable attack there um but shadow sneak is also quite good too having you know a better time into steel type pokemon when it comes to master league pvp you basically always want to go with the shadow sneak because there are so many powerful steel type pokemon that you don't want to be kind of stuck against them without a neutral hit into them so i'd say master league shadow sneak is kind of the bread and butter then when it comes to the dragon breath move set it's probably just going to be shadow sneak for that same reason um, but there are use cases for the ancient power you could throw off an opponent that doesn't think you have it right so i'm not going to say that it's a move that you can't run with dragon breath and then finally when it comes to shadow force shadow force is kind of bad right it's 90 energy cost that's pretty insane uh, but there are some use cases for it because giratina altered form doesn't have a big closing nuke type attack i'd say in the ultra league it feels kind of pointless because giratina is so bulky that you're mostly dominating stuff with your bulk you don't really need a big nuke attack in the ultra league in the master league i think it could have a little bit more clout definitely not the first recommendation ever um definitely a very spicy option so you gotta have to have that meta perspective and you know a lot of familiarity with how giratina altered form plays to begin with before ever considering using the move but i think it could have some utility in the master league just based on how the pacing of the master league is compared to the great league and ultra league it's just it's a bit different up there right um but definitely not the first choice for charge move on giratina altered form so with that out of the way let's talk about those ivs the breakpoints and starting out i'm going to talk about shadow claw giratina altered form in the ultra league so when it comes to shadow claw giratina altered form in the ultra league uh here's a table showcasing the 161 different uh recommendations i have in regards to that there are actually more than 161 that fit these uh stipulations here right um i think there's like over a thousand well over a thousand um so you can uh change the table up here you can set top 161 you can just make it an even bigger number if you want to see more options um i just have this table cut at the uh rank one raid catch one and then a couple interesting ones i noticed uh, a little bit beyond that right so it's like if you're going to be worse stat product than the rank one raid captured one then it's like then what's the point are you really trading for bulk at that point you know that's the kind of question i'm raising there right um, so just to keep it simple, I'm keeping it to these ones. So there is an attack weight on this. The recommended attack weight is 134.38 attack. 
Uh, that attack set is specific to the Galarian Stumpfisk, allowing you to more easily overcome it in the 1-1 shield scenario if you're using Shadow Sneak, and then you can overcome it in the 2-2 shield scenario if you are foregoing Shadow Sneak for like Ancient Power or something like that right? And then to add to that, this attack stat isn't just about Galarian Stumpfisk. Starting at 132.25, uh, you get a breakpoint on the rank 1 raid captured Giratina altered form. Uh, so if you do have a bit more of an attack stat beyond the 132.25, then you can also have coverage for the higher bulk weighted ones that people could get from trading, such as this. So I think that kind of syncs up with the uh, 134.38 pretty nicely and of course this does give credence to using even higher attack weights on Giratina so you can get that attack breakpoint in the mirror more often. Uh, when it comes to your defense weights I don't think it's reasonable to try to chase a defense stat to avoid the attack breakpoint on opposing Giratina because you need such a high defense weight for it to be consistent that it'd be uh, pretty unreasonable right like I think you need well above uh, 168 defense so like a really exaggerated defense weight of course if you do happen to have a super high defense Giratina altered form I think that is pretty well worth considering you know maybe run some simulations on it and see what's going on there uh, but for a bread and butter recommendation because of how unlikely it is to get that super high defense weight even if you trade like over 100 times you probably won't get it um, I'm not really recommending it to you and then on top of that they could have a slightly higher attack weight and then you're not getting the defense break point so it's it's, it's tough, right? It's tough. In fact, when it comes to defense recommendation, I have the minimum set at 159.21, and that's kind of covering you against an attack weighted Trevenant. And then slightly lower, there is a best buddy Galarian Stumpfisk breakpoint on top of it that it could get on you if you've got too low of a defense. So I think 159.21 is a safe minimum. And then for the HP, I have 200 set as the minimum. It's kind of an arbitrary set you know if you have like a super high defense weight you could probably get away with like 198 hp or something um i just didn't notice any other like obvious hard checks for defense and hp for giratina altered form so i just picked those ones because i gotta draw the line in the sand somewhere right um but if you've got a lot of experience with giratina altered form and you know a bit better when it comes to that hp check then you know don't let me tell you otherwise i think what makes it difficult for giratina altered forms bulk checks uh, in particular, is how it's used in the Ultra League, where it's kind of like that hard wall Pokemon. You're usually farming up before you take something out with it. So it's it's really hard to draw a line where the bulk matters because a lot of its matchups aren't straightforward, linear matchups like they are for other Pokemon. Uh, so I would say that it's a bit tougher. So if you do happen to have more bulk then what's recommended here, like you got a 132 attack stat or something, but you've got such massive bulk to make up for that, then I really wouldn't say that's a worse option because you are just kind of like exaggerating and making better on Giratina's primary role. Um, but if you are rolling deep and you're getting sick of trading Giratina altered forms, then I think the uh, 134.38 attack stat is a good place to settle around because you get that mirror break point and then you also get the uh, Galarian Stumpfisk breakpoint. Not the most important breakpoints around, uh, but you know, you may as well, right? You may as well get it. Now there are some higher attack breakpoints to think about for Giratina. Uh, for 136.17, you can get a breakpoint on the rank one Scrafty, which can enable the 2-2 shield scenario, circumstances depending. Basically, if they power up punch bait you a couple times, it's just not gonna go your way, right? Uh, one thing I think is kind of funny about that though, is uh, if you look at the rank one raid catch here, it's got 136.16 attack. It's 0 0.01 away from getting the break point, which is just kind of cheesy, right? So if you're not too into trading and you got some attack weights that are beyond the 136, right? I think that's still, you know, it still has that niche kind of tech going on that could help it out there. But I just wanted to highlight that. that I think it's kind of funny. Uh, to add Scrafty, isn't always going to be the rank one because the rank one's like the 9, 15, 15 or something like that. So a lot of players opt to go for their egg hatch breakpoints or their uh, their egg hatch IVs or their uh, lucky trade IVs. So the rank one should be fine for getting the Scrafty breakpoint. Now moving on to Dragon Breath, things get a little bit more spicy. They get a little bit more inverted goofy over here. As you can tell at the PvP IV table, we're looking at some 
high attack weights happening for Giratina Altered Form. So yeah, the high attack weight that I'm recommending for Giratina here is going to be 138.17, and then the defense and the HP minimums are still set to 159.21 and 200 respectively. It's just kind of like a general check, right? The important thing for the defense is going to be the 159.21. The HP uh, technically can have some wiggle room there. Uh, so why 138.17? Why this goofy, crazy high attack weight? Uh, well, this attack weight encompasses the Greedent matchup, so you now have an improved matchup in the 2-2 shield scenario, and you have improved farming in other shield scenarios, and then it also enables the best buddy Umbreon 1-0 shield scenario. So if Umbreon thinks it's got it slick, it's got it going on, you know, it's not shielding any of your Dragon Claws, it thinks it has this on lock, it's going to beat the Giratina, and then all of a sudden, you spend one little shield... To block that final foul play, well, Umbreon will be losing that matchup now. So it's a pretty interesting consideration. On top of that, this encompasses the Talonflame breakpoint at 137.31 attack, enabling the 1 2 shield scenario and improved farming. Talonflame's not too bad into Giratina. It's praying that it can, you know, ramp up its attack stat and land some Brave Birds there, right? And if you get a breakpoint on it, you limit its ability to reach those brave birds. So I think that that's pretty useful. And then it also encompasses the OG, the original attack weighted Giratina altered form attack breakpoint for the Dragon Breath. And that's against Swampert, enabling the 1 2 shield disadvantage scenario. So you spend one shield, they spend two shields. And uh, yeah, this is actually the original Dragon Breath Giratina breakpoint. From back when GBL, you know, was first a thing. Uh, Swampert roamed freely, being the de facto safe swap, actually made Venusaur worth considering back in the day um, because of its ability to flip the Giratina matchup should you land some earthquakes there. And if you're using Dragon Breath Giratina and you had this attack weight, well, then Swampert wasn't having such a great time there anymore now, was it, right? Uh, so that is still pretty valid to this day. And I would say that if you're not interested in trading for a higher attack weight, uh, for example, the only raid catch one that does this super high attack weight is the 141010. Um, you could always go down here and change this attack option to 136.79 or maybe 137.31. Uh, so you could get some more raid catch options to look at. Because while this super high attack weight, the 138.17, is pretty tantalizing, right? If you're not interested in trading to begin with, it's not like that big of a deal. Like, it's nice to have. But it's not that big of a deal, right? You're not giving up a whole lot, uh, but what you are giving up is your time and, you know, special trades and Stardust trying to get this higher attack weight. So just, just something to highlight there. And then to add, these higher attack weights also give you the Kofagrigus matchup, the 1-0, the 2-1, and the 2-2 shield scenarios. And then it also gets a breakpoint in the mirror, starting at 134.24 against the rank 1 trade-weighted Giratina. So, like... Basically the highest like bulk Giratina you're ever going to come across. Uh, at least having that 134.24 attack can be useful there. One other interesting thing to highlight with this too is while you might not want to trade for higher attack weights, if you are already trading for the higher bulk weights, right? Well, these bad IVs, these, ew, I can't believe I rolled this, right? For my IVs, I'm trying to get better bulk here. Come on, man. Um, well, these can be some nice treasures for the Dragon Breath Giratina, right? So your Shadow Claw one prefers the trade bulk. The uh, Dragon Breath one here prefers the trade attack. So you could have a little synergy there when you get your bad rolls for the Shadow Claw. Definitely worth keeping your eyes peeled for. And of course, once again, both of those tables are linked in the description in the article on Game Press there, along with all the numbers that I just talked about in a text-based format so you can kind of reference them on your own. I would say that if you're not interested in building two Giratinas, there is a pretty solid one and done Giratina if you were to go for like a 136.81 attack weight. That way you get the Swampert, you get the Venusaur, you get the Scrafty, you know, depending on what fast move you want to flex to. So I think for a raid caught Giratina, that's definitely something to keep your eye out for. Of course, the rank one, you know, raid caught Giratina is also pretty fantastic. Um, but if you do want to trade to increase your bulk, then, you know, don't toss all of those goofy high attack weights because that could be useful for a Dragon Breath Giratina down the line should you want to run it. Then finally, we have the Master League Giratina. And uh, Master League is 
a lot more comfy when it comes to PvP IVs than the Great League or the Ultra League are because you always want to have the Hundo. It's based on the level, not based on the CP, so you always want to have the 15, 15, 15. There's like no circumstances uh, realistically where you want less than that. However, realistically, you're probably not going to get the Hundo, right? It takes 80 raids with a Mega Level 3 bonus to get the XL candy you need to power it up for the Level 50 Master League, right? And even if you did 300 raids, mind you, that's like roughly $200 USD, right? There is still a 25% probability that you will not have the, the Giratina that's a, that's a hundo, right? If you just did the 80 raids, and this is all once again assuming that you have a 100% capture rate, which we all know that we don't, right? Even if you just did the 80 raids, there's only a 30% probability that you do have it, right? So chances are you don't have the hundo. So what is hundo enough to be worth all of that XL candy, or should you just save that XL candy for a Giratina origin form, right? Uh, well, I think the minimum is roughly 15, 15, 13. You could thrift on the attack a bit. It probably wouldn't hurt you that much, uh, but 15 attack is pretty important. One thing I wouldn't get rid of though is that 15 defense as it does enable the Togekiss 1-1 one, one shield scenario if you're using Shadow Claw and Ancient Power and could let you hang on long enough if you've got like Shadow Force or Shadow Sneak to close out a Togekiss fight. Um, but you could thrift a little bit lower if you don't believe in that, and you could go as low as uh, 13 defense, which is like the next notable breakpoint, which is specific to the Landorus Therian form. Uh, 13 HP I feel is non-negotiable because it's important for the mirror matchup. Having 14 HP is a bit better though because it gives you more comfort against a Melmetal in a even-steven kind of scenario. So yeah, and as far as the attack goes... Either you care about the Mirror CMP and Snorlax, or you don't. And that's basically where the line is drawn in the sand there. So yeah, up to you if you want to do that. Giratina Altered Form isn't the biggest name in Master League PvP. Usually the Origin Form is the one that we want to use. Um, but it's your XL candy, and it's your uh, it's your Master League, right? So go get them. Oh yeah, and if you're curious, this... These breakpoints also apply to the level 40 Master League. Typically, breakpoints carry between the level 40 and the level 50 because it's it's just you're increasing the level, right? So if the breakpoint happens when you're just above a certain defense stat on the opponent, right? Then if you just increase your level, then you're increasing your stats. You still maintain that upper hand, right? Um, it's not always this case sometimes it can be different by one because it is based on a multiplier the attack the defense and hp has a multiplier set to it so it's not just like adding you know one stat you know what i mean um but most often it's going to be the same and i looked into giratina altered form and it is the same so so that's all i gotta say about giratina altered forms pvp ivs if you got any questions on this content of course comment below let me know what's up and i'll be happy to help you out and if you enjoyed this kind of content and you want to see more like it well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, link in the description.